What's going on, y'all? Welcome to Tape Alert, hottest in the city. We got the legend, oh. the behind the scenes legend, SO. Yo, what's good? What's good? How you doing, dude? brother? Doing all right. Which one of these cameras is mine? This one right here? Or both of them? This, this one, one right, right here. Cool. Right, yeah. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you, me and the Tape Alert family. Thank you for taking time out on a Sunday. Um, coming through to drop some knowledge, some wisdom. Of course. And your experiences throughout the game. Yeah. Um, you uh, were born in the Bronx. Yeah, I was born in the Bronx. But raised in Southside, Jamaica. Yeah, because I only was in, in the Bronx for like one month. You okay. Know what I'm saying? My parents was there. Um, both my twin sisters was there. So when they had me, they needed more space. They had to move. So okay. it, it was affordable because my godmother lived in Southside. You know what I'm saying? So we, we grew up in um, the Rochdale Village. Oh, Rochdale. You know okay. So, um, you know, my... Um, my Aunt Janet was there, and she told my mother, like, yeah, I think that y'all should just come on out here because it's a different style of, style of wave compared to where we was at inside the Bronx, and it was more room. Copy. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like the Bronx, because I'm from, originally from the Bronx. I uh, moved when it was like 10, 11, but, mm -hmm. you know, I was going back and forth. The apartments was huge. Well, not where they not were. Where, they okay, was in Riverdale, so they okay. had so they was on Vars Avenue first, and okay. they was in in the hood. Okay. So when my mother got with my father, he had a crib in the Bronx, so he got rid of his his crib, and then they moved to um, Riverdale, and they had a two bedroom with my twin sister shared. Copy. So when it was time for us to move in that building, they didn't have three bedroom. You know how some buildings they don't have the three bedroom apartment. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They ha have the three bedroom, so. I don't know, like I was a month old and yeah. they just made the decision because they, oh, because in Queens, the shit was a co-op. Okay. So, you know, you put money down and you owned it. They thought it was going to be a, a better style of situation. It wound up turning into the hood because, you know, when you get stuff and then you pass it down to your kids, your kids don't value it. Right. Niggas pissing on the elevator. Crack came in in 1985. You know what I'm saying? So much crack came in, it changed everything. everything. Fucking Southside. 50 grew up right literally across Guy R. Brewer from me. It was called New York Boulevard back then. Oh, okay. So we all grew up together, 130, 134 Southside. We was all like together, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't know him at 50 or, or, or even Boo Boo. I called him Kurt. Oh, okay. I was a basketball player. Right. So I got cool with everybody because I, I played sports. I played basketball. I played baseball. I played football. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I was an athlete. Throughout, okay. Throughout. Got you know it, what I'm got saying? it. That was my thing. Okay. And and to sum it all in, what was what was your uh, childhood like growing up, man, in Southside, man? Oh, it was good. You know what I'm saying? My mother and my father, I, I actually was one of the few people that had both their parents. You know what I'm saying? So I had my father always. I, my parents are still alive. Oh, Still God ticking. Bless them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, it was a good life, but I mean, you know, you still go outside. So you're still encountering a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally encounter. Of course. You know what I mean? Now, I got a lot of passes in, in the streets because I was an athlete or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I always was still known as, you know, I really don't want to do it, but if I have to, I will. I like you know the what way I'm you're saying? saying that, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to protect myself and my family and my friends first and foremost, but do I want to go this route? Nah. You know what I'm saying? That's not part of my thing. I graduated from, from fucking Morgan State. You know Morgan what I'm State. saying? Okay. Yeah, I started throwing parties there. That's when I got into the whole music lifestyle, the hip hop lifestyle. It was at Morgan State. A couple dudes named um, Kenny McAllister, Bobby Jones, Marlon Powell, and they were all from D.C. Oh, that's the and area. They, and they, and, but, and, but they rocked with um, Sabe Burnett. What's the dude that rocked with Puffy? Um, that's in Atlanta. What's his name? Nah, he's a he's a he talks on the mic and shit. He's like he's like another like I don't want to describe him as that, but he he's puffy right hand man. They all from D.C., but they schooled the guys on throwing parties and becoming a Vince thing. Cause in D.C., throwing events is a big it's deal. A big thing. Yeah, like you ain't just throwing parties out there like. They they serious about they pimping. They bringing in sponsorship. They using real money. They not trying to make money at first. They trying to build their name up. They serious about they pimping. And they even look at it as marketing. Right. But back then, I didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like marketing parties. So when I got on, 
I became big at throwing parties. That's how me and Clue got down. I I took over the Emoja Council at fucking Morgan State. I threw Jay Z at Morgan State. I threw the Lost Boys at Morgan State. I threw after party. I, I I actually was the first dude to book Jay Z independently at Morgan State for the Gallery 21 East, and he went on record to say that that was the worst show he ever did. Wow. I was 19. It was hot in there. The club owners kind of jerked me around, but I paid. Right. I paid everybody. The sound was going out. Jay had to do some shit with no beat. Everybody was like, it was the greatest party ever. Dame Dash was right there. Like, you could touch Hov. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those but humble I, beginnings. I, I definitely made money, and that's what actually put me with Clue, which is funny because me and Clue knew each other from Queens, but his girlfriend at Morgan State at the time and my girlfriend at Morgan State at the time, they were both from Queens, and they were roommates. Mm. So when Clues met me again, we was cool. He came down to the show with Hov and them. This was early on with Hov and Foxy to see who was doing the show. You know what I'm saying? And then he found out it was his girlfriend's best friend's boyfriend. So he came down to be like, yo. He called me by my real name. Called my real name, Randy. Right, he was right. like, yo, Rand, we both from Queens. Our girlfriends live with each other. We knew each other prior to that. I should be doing your parties. And I was like, you're right. I didn't look at that because I had relationships with SNS and Craig G and um, all types of DJs when you're throwing parties. You know what I'm saying? I managed my own DJ that was in college with me, and I just washed everybody. Right. And was like, yo, Clue going to do everything. And he charged me more money, but he, char <laughs> he charged me more money than they did. But he gave me a cheaper price than everybody else. else did. So you still So made. say when he was charging fifteen hundred plus travel, he was charging me nine hundred all in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now the other DJs was I was charging probably like six hundred dollars. So now I'm paying three hundred more dollars. But now I got DJ Clue. Before like when he first started rocking, I was younger than all of them. So you got to think I'm eighteen years old at college. Actually, 17 years old is when I started college. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I turned 18 that year, and my first party was April. Wow. So you're one of the I was originators. 18. Yeah, I was 18. Before, shout out to Tone Bird. I just talked to Tone Bird. Tone Bird was a BMF uh, affiliate that started throwing parties. He's big. He owns Karma now in, um, in Miami. Tone Bird was trying to throw parties with me. When I came home, and I was like, nah, I'm not, doing, I'm not doing no more parties. I graduated college. I'm managing now. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a freaking manager. <laughs> and I missed the boat, though, because yeah. I could have made tons of money. I didn't understand the marketing. Right. I didn't understand that everybody in this world wants to have a good time. If you provide them a good time, they'll do anything for you. Right. I didn't understand that. So even at my events now, when I throw them, everybody be like, yo, you got to throw events because I know how to do it. I know what people are going to like. Oh, Def Jam, give me $3,000. Yo, y'all, come out, eat and drink for free. Turn this music up. Invite some of your finest hoes with you. It's all good. My wife is cool. It's sluts of rama in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can <laughs> do whatever you want in here. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it'd like to be at. And I, and I learned to make them smaller now. So now I do dinners. Small, private. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something at, at, at Clue Pizza Shop, and I'm going to DJ it. And I'm only invite 30 people. And I'm going to get them pizza and champagne. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to leave home with some sluts. And they're going to be like, yo, S set me up. Like, everywhere he go, I'm lit. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and that's what comes along with me. When I took my niggas to the Soho house to do French shit, none of them knew each other. Show up, yo, call Thomas at 9. Show up at 8. Let's all go eat pizza. And I'm going to smoke some weed together. So when we walk in this joint, I want y'all to understand, y'all all got a little check off of me. We just going to have a good time. Copy. Because these people got to remember we was here. Once they remember that we was here, they going to want to have me back again. Right. We going to make more money. They going to want the vibe. The vibe is everything. You know what I'm saying? I came to Clue, said, yo, niggas paid $5,000 for an hour and a half of DJing. Why I got to take their money nasty? You know, he's like, yo, you better have my bet. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
I ain't on that type of time. Thank you for fucking with my man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, yo, I, I appreciate this $1,000 that, you, that I'm, I'm going to make, my dude, for just being my man's man and showing up. This is a good life. Why am I going to act like this life not good? Right, 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 right. I ain't coming at y'all when, when y'all call me. Niggas pay me for this shit straight up. But certain niggas just call you and you just, it just happens. Like niggas just catch me on, on, on a good day sometimes. Like, yeah. I swear to God, I, me and my wife might have a good day. I might be coming off making a whole mountain of money. And the nigga just be like, yo, you, you want to come down? I'd be like, I ain't got to charge this nigga. Right. I just caught a good when I spoke to y'all. I was like, I just got the money from Soho House. I just booked the consultation. I just booked something else. Man, let me come down here. Let me come fuck with these young dudes. Let me get some exposure. Let me see what they gonna do. What they got to offer. Yeah, maybe it. I could get them something. Everybody know everybody. That, the connection, man. You're the connection for the connection. Relationships, that. everything Relationships. in this business, especially for us, is most important. Tape alert. Tape alert. Tape alert.